were charging eastwards, out of San Ignacio, across the Baja Peninsula, and towards the Sea of Cortez. With the occasional break, of course. Down to um, Loreto. Loreto. Si. From uh, this morning is uh, San Ignacio. San Ignacio. Okay. Gracias. And if the occasional checkpoint seems a hassle, then A, don't travel in Arizona, because U.S. Immigrations and Border Patrol seem nowhere near as calm. And B, roads this spectacular are well worth it. Welcome then to the Bay of Conception and some of the best road riding the Baja has to offer. Unfortunately, it's not all travel brochure blue seas meets azure skies. There is a rather straight bit in the middle. Which gives Kevin a chance to learn how to feed himself through the Icon variant. Which is likely something they hadn't considered in the helmet's design. And both of us a chance to take in the desert in bloom. And then it was down to the final leg. A ride that would see us crossing what we thought was our destination. On two bikes that at the start, we were dubious would even survive this kind of adventure. Tropic of Cancer. We'd reached our destination and crossed an abstract line, one that isn't the sum of the sights of the Baja. The beaches, the sunrises, the experiences that are the true destination of an adventure ride. But still, we have a job to do. But maybe we'll just linger here in the Baja a bit and ride back to California before we deliver that critique. So here we are, five weeks later, and over 8,500 kilometers of gravel, mud, dust, pavement, and sand. Actually, more types of sand than we ever knew existed. And our two Honda Veraderos are a little dirtier, but tellingly, little the worse for wear. And what have we learned about the Honda Veradero? We've learned that while we may not love this bike, we do respect it. And despite its most definitely street-oriented underpinnings, it can take a beating. Along the way, we met folks that said the forks were too spindly and they'd buckle under off-road use. Which didn't happen. And that the linked braking 
would cause the front end to push, taking us down in the sand or gravel, or the ABS would fling us out of control down a hill. Yet strangely, we remained upright. People said we'd bend the rims, and we did bend the rim. And then we fixed it with a boulder and a leather belt. So score one for in the field repairs. And the levers would break if we had a crash. But then the drop bars and the luggage from Twisted Throttle did its job. And it's not like we went into this without any warnings. We knew that the bike was heavy and that it wouldn't deal well with sand. Indeed, the lady from Honda even told us, it's not very good in sand. In reality, it sinks like the Bismarck the moment you let off the throttle. Of course, weight was an issue. The truth is that these are as big and as heavy and as bulletproof as an army tank. But in return for our abuse, all they asked for was gas and some chain loop. They didn't even use any oil. So it will get you from the Pyrenees and through Africa. But you'll need to be prepared for what a ride like that entails. It'll be hard, it'll be dangerous, it'll be the workout of your life, and it might even be a bit stupid. And yes, there are better bikes for the job. But if you choose to, the Veradero is up for some adventure. Indeed, it took us to some of the best places in the Baja. And you just can't take that away from the bike.